Very good vibe. Very much like the original. Lots of yeah. fun. Great characters. Like I thought Glenn Powell's Tyler Owens was awesome. Like he, yeah. he kind of gives you that, that vibe, you know, like in the remember in the original, like they're talking about Bill Paxton, like they called him the extreme and how crazy he was and stuff. Yeah. You get that vibe from Glenn Powell right away. Cause he's like, yeah. I don't care. I'll go right to the tornado. He's a um, cowboy. He's yes. A tornado Wrangler. Welcome back to the Movie Dads Podcast. We're your hosts, Howie. I'm Kyle. We are not dead yet. Hold on. We're back, baby. I got we a prize for you. Home. Man, look at this. Got the throwback on. Oh, baby, I'm knocking oh, things you... over in here. It's a, it's a madhouse in here, boys. All right. I've been waiting 15 years. She's finally here. The old Jaguars throwbacks baby fred taylor repping for you pivot podcast give us a shout out <laughs> she's she's a beaut clark <laughs> all right so when you text me that it'll be fucking jeez nice what are you style. doing get your fucking pets heads are falling together. off good <laughs> lord our pets heads are falling off uh when you texted me that earlier i immediately that's what i I got the reference. She's a beaut, Clark. I'm like, yeah. God damn, she is. She is. I don't usually rock the Jags gear or jerseys, but I like. It literally came in right before the pod started, so I'm like, I'm fucking putting this on tonight, and I'm wearing it. So it's reasonable. I I I agree. I agree with You'll the decision. Allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. I'll allow it. Nice. Uh, it's a good setup choice. Behind you, you got a little new setup going, a little yeah. light action. A little change. Uh, I got some new LEDs. I decided to uh, make the room dark because it was always so freaking bright in here. And I moved my desk. It's again, some at a different angle now. I don't know if you probably oh, can't nice. tell. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I moved my desk. So it's at a different, it's at a different angle. Um, look at us, our little, our summer break. I think we've gone two years in a row. We took a little mm-hmm. su- summer hiatus and we come back rejuvenated. New gear, new setup. Yeah, it's uh, we took two weeks off. Um, you know, and it wasn't like it was planned. It was like no. you had you were out of town, mm-hmm. family stuff. I was out of town, family stuff, and it was like we were so freaking busy. We had the Fourth of July in there. Both were traveling. Kids were in different places in the country. Like it was, it was, it was mad. busy. So it was yeah. just like I think the first week we were like, let's just take the week off, and then the second week. We just didn't say anything, and it just happened. <laughs> yeah, we're like, all right, well, we'll, we'll connect when everyone's back. Well, I, th- I thought I knew you were going up to Minnesota, but I, I then thought like, oh, maybe this was your Canada trip because I know you go out into the wilderness every year. But I, it wasn't this trip, was it? Mm-hmm. No, I'm going. That's next up? month. That's next month. Nice, nice. Yeah. But yeah, so we're back after two weeks off. Episode fifty-five, big premiere movie of the week. Twisters. Let's go. The requel. Sequel reboot. Hmm. We'll talk about it. Yeah, that's actually, that's a great question. Great question. I mean, I think they happen in the same universe because Dorothy. I was just, I was going to say, the only connection was Dorothy. That's about it, right? So, it. And they didn't um, give us the connection of that, right? No, I think we were just like, supposed to assume it. Right, You're like, oh, good. There's going to be throwbacks, and then it was like the only one, and it happened in the first thirty seconds of the movie. Anyway, yeah. we'll get to that more, just like we do with any big premiere movie of the week. We'll uh, start with our initial thoughts on the film without giving away any spoilers. We'll do our spoiler warning, and then we'll talk about the details of the movie because it did just come out this past weekend. Um, so if you haven't gotten a chance to see it yet, we'll tell you whether we recommend that you see it or not. Um, but yeah. If you're watching this on YouTube, please click the like and subscribe. Um, make sure you click that bell to get notifications on when new episodes come out, which is typically 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesdays. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you can find us on many podcast networks such as Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio, among many others. Um, you can also find some of our short clips and videos on social media at Movie Dads Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Two weeks off, so lots to talk about. We'll start with we're movie dads. We have movie kids. Mm -hmm. Um, My son, Des, went up to Minnesota with his grandparents for a week and got to spend a week at the lake, and he was spoiled rotten. Um, And it was just him for the majority of it. 
he got to do, he got to eat like candy and ice cream every day. He got to go tubing on the lake every day. He got to play yard games every day. I mean, he went to all sorts of different places. They do this thing in this town up there, Niswa, Minnesota, on Wednesdays in the summer. Niswa? Niswa? Niswa. 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 Minnesota. Uh, They do turtle races. It's a big deal. Turtle races? Turtle races. Turtle races. Are they bandanaed up? No, they're not. They're really just box Mm -hmm. turtles in a bucket, and you stand in a circle, (laughs) and then you basically splash water on your turtle to try and make it go. (laughs) Dez's turtle did not. Story of my life. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, So they, yeah, he, he, huge, good time. Like I said, he went up with his grandparents after the fourth. So then I drove up the following weekend to go get him. Um, So I drove up Thursday night, spent Friday, Saturday, and then him and I drove back Sunday um, last week. Meanwhile, my wife and Reagan went to Branson, Missouri for the week. Branson. Yeah, and spent spent there with the other half of my family. They went to Branson, not 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 Abby's family, my family. Um, so they spent the week at Table Rock Lake in Branson, um, swimming and you know going around the the we like to call it Old People Vegas. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they had a good time down there. But yeah, it's been so. It was when Des and I got back. It was just me and him for a few days. Um, but it was busy. Work's been crazy. But um, yeah, kids had a great. Great holiday over the fourth, and then got to go on a couple vacations in separate directions. Sounds like a lot of driving, but like a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, I can't remember if we have filmed since my trip, but two mm-hmm. weeks ago was out. I, my wife and I went out to uh, Tucson, Arizona, where my mom's family is from. Uh, my grandparents had passed away a couple months ago, two months ago, and. Finally, everyone was able to get there from all over the country. So my wife and I went out there. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, obviously, it was not the best reason to go, but it was great to see lots of family kind of like uh, cathartic. It was the first time I've ever been in my granddad's like workshop slash garage without getting yelled at. So um, it was it was great. Did you hold I, uh, flashlights and get yelled at for holding them wrong? Oh, it's the first time I didn't get yelled at for nothing and or holding the flashlight. So uh, I I did was telling my cousins this funny story though. My granddad was like he always had he's a retired military uh, Air Force dude. He worked on jet airplanes his whole life, but like growing up, he always had one beer in his hand. And uh, my cousins and I had were talking about like, I could swear when we were kids, like it wasn't a brand. It just said beer. It was like a purple can. It said <laughs> beer. And we got in the garage and it turns out we were right. <laughs> I don't even know what the brand was. The dude is just drinking beer and it just says beer on it. So, um, and then another funny story it's about like a beer. movie prop. I, I don't know. Honestly, <laughs> it's it's interesting. But when I was like nine, I had wanted to be cool like him, staying out there by myself, him and grandma. And he always had a beer. So I wanted to drink a beer. And he had he was like sick at one point. So he had wasn't able to drink. So she had bought him like non-alcoholic beer. I don't know if you ever heard of that before, but yeah. um, it's gross. But he was like, hey, if you want to drink a beer with me, here's a non-alcoholic beer. And so I drank this whole disgusting non-alcoholic beer with him, thinking it was so cool. You're not much of a beer drinker anyway, so. No. Well, at the time, I hadn't grown into my college form yet. But uh, no, at nine, I was not a beer drinker. And my grandma came out and found, and like, as she was like, what are you drinking? She's like, oh, I'm, I'm drinking a a non-alcoholic beer. She was like, this has alcohol in it. And so I mm-hmm. had a, had a accidentally was at a beer at nine and I didn't have one for a long time after that. I didn't enjoy it. So, um, well, no, that's what, that's kind of what I meant when I said you're not much of a beer drinker anyway, it's probably yeah. turned you completely off of it. Oh, I, uh, I may or may not have tipped the electric scooter over the edge of oh the uh, workshop. So <laughs> I don't know if it was the beer related, but it was on the Ooh, same trip. It's the 0. 0.0004 alcohol <laughs> yeah. content in that yes. beer. They, they live out in the middle. Uh, they have like this super cool ranch, Adobe ranch home, like out in the middle of the Saguaro National 
forest. It's a desert. Um, so like big cactus everywhere. So it was cool, super cool. Um, and then my kids, they did 4th of July with the, uh, in-laws here. So it's the mm. first time in many years where I didn't have to listen to world war three outside for like two weeks. It was just Block party glorious. was pretty awesome, I, dude. And the I, fireworks I, show was a hell of a thing <laughs> this year. I tell you <laughs> every year it gets crazier in Nebraska. So it was, I was bummed that we had to miss, uh, the fireworks, but. <laughs> Um, and then last week, nothing too crazy, just lots of sports running around. You you were gone. Um, so it, you, I was just busy, like, working and dadding. So, um, But there's a lot to talk about. We've been gone for two weeks. Let's jump into – because we got a ton of stuff uh, that we're excited about. Let's jump into my – talk about all of it. We won't, but we can cover some of the good stuff. Um, let's jump into my most excited segment, our, uh, six to midnight. This is the, uh, segment where we talk about things that get us up in the morning, uh, for nerd stuff like new trailers, new movie news, new casting, um, announcements, uh, new video games, comic books, all that jazz. There's a lot that just recently came out. I'm going to let you take the lead because you've got kind of the more of the bigger interesting stuff. Well, I'll sprinkle mine in here and there. Well, that sounds good. So I'll go first. Um, so mine's very Marvel centric today. As Shocking. A lot of Marvel news that came out in the last <laughs> few weeks. I got to start with the trailer for Captain America, Brave New World. We got our first trailer. Uh, movie comes out in February of next year. Obviously, Sam Wilson, played by Anthony Mackie, is the new Captain America. Mm -hmm. um so falcons mm -hmm. captain america if you watch the show on disney plus falcon and the winter soldier it's kind of how it ended with anthony <laughs> mackie taking over the role of of captain america we got our first look at harrison ford as president thunderbolt ross taking over for the uh great late william hurt who passed away um and they recast mm -hmm. that role as harrison ford right anybody who knows the comics knows Thunder thunderbolt ross eventually turns into the red hulk Mm. Right. What we didn't mm -hmm. know is that we were going to see him in the trailer, which we get a tease of him right at the end. And then the first poster teaser poster comes out and it's just a big old red Hulk hand holding the Captain America shield. Um, I was talking to, to um, some friends about it. And like I said, I, I got to get real winter soldier vibes from the first trailer. Mm -hmm. Feels mm -hmm. very like political thriller. Yeah. action like centered around the the president and the white house and an assassination attempt and there's just a lot of stuff going on you get like a brief glimpse of tim blake nelson's uh samuel stearns which mm -hmm. we haven't seen since edward norton's incredible hulk right we got a tease of him at the end of that movie where the the like radiation's dripping onto his head and it's starting mm -hmm. to grow if you yeah, remember yeah, yeah. that but so you get a tease of him in the trailer um obviously he becomes the leader Mm -hmm. in the comics so it looks like we're getting that and i anyway, liked that edward norton hulk movie by oh, the way i, I, I did too i think out, it, i think it was thing. good the, you know the rumors were that he got recast because he was problematic but yeah and i've heard that before mm -hmm. so that's a very good possibility star star he's too bright of a star to shine with all the rest of the ones that are in this but he's universe. not anymore though he, his star has faded a bit he's still a great actor but how dare but the trail I anyway, I thought the trailer looked really good. Um, and I'm excited to see it when it comes out next February. So that was kind of the first thing was talking about Captain America Brave New World trailer. Nice so. new Captain America. I'm still I mean, you're about to talk about a lot of the news that I think it was kind of will will tag with what I'm about to say, but I get a Marvel is about to be back on their thang a thang here vibes. Um I still I know that the comic book Cap Falcon becomes Captain America and that's mm -hmm. like a thing. And it's from what I hear it was a interesting story. I'm like, I'm like a leave Falcon as Falcon. Give me Captain America. Give me all the character. Bring Iron Man back. Like, so I'm not that on this movie yet. I'm not into it as much as I should, but with all of the other things that came out, I I'm w a little bit more excited for it than I thought I was going to be because mm -hmm. of where I think it's leading to. Makes sense. It does make sense. 
But that was big. And then we got a little bit of information. This is this was reported by all the major news outlets just a few days ago. Um, but originally, they had been looking at Sean Levy for the director role for Avengers 5, which was originally supposed to be called the Kang Dynasty. Mm-hmm. And they've moved on from Kang. We don't know in what um, capacity, like if it's completely moved on or if they just don't know what they're doing with the character yet. But they no. already came out and said it's not going to be called the Kang Dynasty right now. It's just Avengers 5. We don't have a title for it. Fine. Make good decision. Let's wait and see. But what we just heard is that Marvel is in early talks to bring the Russo brothers back mm-hmm. to direct Avengers 5 and Avengers 6, which is supposed to be Avengers Secret Wars, mm. which bring me bring me all the Secret Wars, please. Yeah. Am I, I was I am that. I wrong? And that the rumors are that it could potentially be an X Men versus Avengers. There is have been wrong? a lot of room. There have been a lot of rumors that it could be an X Men versus Avengers movie. I don't know how that's going to work yet. If you're familiar with the original Secret Wars from like 1984, mm-hmm. um, which obviously the biggest thing that came out of the original Secret Wars was Black Suit Spider Man, but. Mm -hmm. Um, the original secret wars was basically like the, the beyonder brings all the major heroes in Marvel and all the major villains. Basically he brings them all into two different factions to, um, kind of compete, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's basically whoever wins, like gets all their wishes fulfilled because it's the beyonder, right? He can do just about anything. What happens in the Secret Wars series that's interesting is, first off, Magneto is with the heroes, which is talked about right away. Like, what are you doing here? You're a psychopath. But it was Mm -hmm. always about Magneto's intentions were always for the good of his people. He just went about it a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. But in the series, the X-Men split off from the rest of the heroes because the X-Men have their own agenda. So there is kind of an Avengers versus X-Men thing going on during Secret Wars. Eventually, they, you know, figure it out and stuff. But so um, like that could be Avengers five and then the Secret Wars main thing could be six. Could be. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, we've got it we, in, in Secret Wars. There's some characters that haven't been introduced in the MCU yet that are very big. Galactus is very big in Secret Wars. And we know he's yeah. coming with Fantastic Four, but it's in a different universe. So we don't know how that's going to work. Mm. Doom is huge in Secret Wars. A, a lot, lot of, of a lot of, news lot of rumors. Yeah, I know. Yeah, not news, Maybe we'll see him right. in a certain movie that comes out this week. I don't know. We'll see. Dude. OK, so that's really I think this movie that drops this week is it's going to do more than we, than the other Deadpools have. Well, did you see Kevin Feige's quote from the other day? He said, if infinity war is a nine and in games, a 10 on the impact they have in the Marvel universe, then Deadpool versus Deadpool and Wolverine is an eight. Oh, no. What he said. Okay, so then that might even help confirm. Listen to our fucking tinfoil conspiracy theories. That all feels like it it reinforces our guess or the rumor of like Tobey Maguire and um and Hugh Jackman taking like leading Secret War Spider Man Wolverine or being a part of it, not maybe leading it, but being a major part of it. So. I like that. I like it a lot. I mean, we know from the Deadpool Wolverine trailer, right? And we'll talk about that and just go right into that. But we know from that trailer is it's a different Wolverine than what we've seen before. Yeah. It's yep. Hugh Jackman, but it's not the same Wolverine. So we got a final trailer while we were away the last two weeks for Deadpool and Wolverine, which mm-hmm. gave away a lot. So we know we're getting Deadpool variants, right? We see Lady Deadpool for sure, very prominent in the new trailer. Mm-hmm. We Mm -hmm. see shadows of other Deadpools, which it looks like we're getting Deadpool the Kid, which is basically like the Billy the Kid version of Deadpool. Because you see him, you see the side of his hip walk around with a six gun and he's got a cowboy hat on, right? I hear there might, that might be an all right, all right, all right. That'd be cool. That'd be super (laughs) cool. Major Deadpool is a a big character. All these, we know we're getting Deadpool variants. We've seen it. Mm -hmm. We saw X-23, Laura, yeah. Played by Daphne Keene, who just like two weeks ago, talking about the Acolyte, they were like, are you sure you're not in Deadpool Wolverine? She goes, 
I like what they did. The trailers look great. I hope they had a lot of fun. Unfortunately, no, I didn't. I wasn't able to be in it. <laughs> and then, kaboom, right there some, in the trailer. Some, somebody showed that clip, and then they showed the Andrew Garfield on the Tonight Show clip. And he's like, it's Photoshop, man. I'm not in the movie. Like, it's, you know, it <laughs> yeah. was, yeah. That's so they put that one in the trailer. They must have just been like, we'll give them this because there's going to be something way bigger coming. Yeah, uh, I the, think they're giving a lot of teases. There's even bigger things to come. So I don't know if you great. heard this one yet. I heard this one the other day. And do you, are you familiar with Boss Logic, the artist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's, Boss he's Logic. like single-handedly fucking cast Rosario Dawson as right. – um, fucking. He he posted something that was caught in the Ahsoka. trailer. Yeah, it's Ahsoka. Something that was caught in the latest trailer, and it's a very. It looks like Iron Man, but it's in a green hood. And oh. so there's this there's this new theory that Robert Downey Jr. is going to play a Doom variant. I have seen a shit ton of that. That like Robert Downey Jr. is the new doom is like what the the rumors are which we i think we were texting about it we we're like what we want Cillian, even though i secretly want him to stay in the dc world um but well, we've, there's it. all these rumors right we're yeah we're gonna see the killian yeah. murphy doc doctor doom we've seen that we've heard we're getting a henry cavill wolverine Oh shit! Yeah, I forgot. Right, about that. we've heard yep. all yep. these things, and and here's the great thing. So right now, as we're recording this, it's Monday night. The world premiere in New York is happening. The press screenings are happening. We're gonna get our reviews in a matter of hours. All these questions are gonna be answered in the form of spoilers online in a matter of Don't hours. You so do avoid it. them. No, no, I Don't no, I will you never do it. Did I ever tell you the story about Avengers Endgame? No. Okay, so um like just the story itself. I saw no, the no, movie. No. Right. No, so it was the it was like the day it came out, right? It was like Thursday, whatever day it premiered, like April twenty sixth or whatever that year. And I had my tickets for like the first IMAX showing that afternoon. Okay. This dude I worked with or used to work with at my last job, all he posts on Facebook is Iron Man and Black Widow done. That's what he posted. That was all he posted. And then, like, there were all these people commenting, and they're like, if that's true, man, you're, you're, you're a dead. fucking dick. <laughs> you're and, getting snapped into oblivion. <laughs> and, like, so I went and saw it. And, and, like, so that scene with her and Hawkeye, I was like, you son of a bitch. And, like, <laughs> I immediately unfriended that dude after the movie was over. I was so oh, mad. Dang, dang. So mad. I I'm So mad. You are way more ballsy when it comes to like reading pre like release reviews or screen like the general like critics are saying type. Well, this I just week, avoid I'll it all together. Look at, nah, this I week I'll look at like because most of them are really good about not spoiling things unless you want them to. They mm -hmm. they will be like, okay, we're going to talk about what's great about this movie. If you want to read on, read on. And then that's yep. where you just stop yep. until Friday or whatever. Yep. So nice. What what other Comic Con excited things do we have? Well, so San Diego Comic Con starts this week. Big news, mm -hmm. right? The Olympics start this week too, which is the same week, oh. which is great. If you like the Olympics, like I'm, I'm a big Summer Olympics guy. I'm all about it. It's way more fun than Winter Olympics. It is. I'll it watch both, but yes, Summer Olympics. Like that's. Some more stars in the summer Olympics, mm -hmm. right? The, the swimming, the gymnastics. It feels more like an track a, like and field a stars. Big event. Like I agree. Winter yeah. Olympics. Olympics. There's there's a, too many sports that like we have never or will never watch. Other Curling. than when it's Olympics. That's the only one I was going to say that I will stay up till 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. to randomly watch a curl. Because it's match. just a bunch of dudes with mustaches uh, and dad bods sliding stones across the ice. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why. In, the, in like a full crouched slide yeah. <laughs> all the way across. Yes. Um, Fucking <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so San Diego Comic-Con starts this week. Um, obviously, it's the biggest Comic-Con. It's Comic-Con International. Uh, the... Biggest con in the world. Tons of like McFarland Toys is going to be there. They're going to do a huge presentation on new toys. I know you'll be watching that. I can't wait. <laughs> hall H is the the big hall where they do all the big events, right? Like we've got events for like some major TV shows, Walking Dead. The boys are doing it. Rings of Power. 
Lois and Clark, they're all doing panels. We get uh, the Penguins doing a panel in Hall H. So these are big deals. Um, sometimes studios come in and they talk about big movies. So it, it's it's very Disney-centric this year. Mm. It, like Disney's 20th Century Studios is coming in doing a big Alien Romulus panel. Oh, um, nope. Obviously, the last one on Saturday is is Marvel, right? That's the big dog. And so... I think we're going to get a lot of positive news. We're going to get some trailers out of this as we usually do. But uh, I was, I, I, we had, you and I talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but no, no, just DC, no gun universe, nothing, which is surprising because we've got, got our first movie coming out. We yeah. got our Supergirl casting, but we've got, we've got nothing else. We like, we know what's getting made, but we don't have anything from it so i was really surprised dc's not doing a, a panel this year unless yeah, they're going to do I, their own thing unless they're going to do say, their own i thing. wonder if is there like a dc direct or something like some event sure. or you know but disney has their own thing too they have that what is that d23 or whatever they have that yeah. thing too but they always if they've got stuff to talk about they'll be in san diego yeah it is weird i did like obviously the movie twister is just motherfucker god you and that microphone did um, the new Twisters movie just came out and it's Glenn Powell, right? Is that his name? Glenn mm -hmm. Powell. He, uh, like all of a sudden this like rumors are flying that he's the new Batman because like, he's just randomly followed James Gunn, Muschietti, the director. Ew, barf. Um, they, they were like core and sweat, which turns out he was in a movie with him twisters we're gonna talk about um, that but he has said very recently within the last month or so that like he he's only interested in playing one character and that would be batman like in the superhero world so like the rumors are swirling right now that he wants to be batman or was cast as batman i will say i like him i'll take I like glenn batman. powell too i'd take him as batman but yeah I still, I, I'm still I like over Alan Rich and I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I like Alan Rich just because he's a fucking brick shit house and would be a badass. Well, and, and I thought we were we, we we talked about this though, like in the Gunverse, we're we're talking Brave and the Bold, right? So we're talking older Batman. So that yeah. doesn't line up. Glenn Powell is only like 35. Yeah, which is honestly, it's kind of. I mean, I get it's okay because we got younger Batman with. Al or with uh Robert Pattinson, so we got we're getting our younger Batman fix. Yeah, but, but like, you think this you Robert this DC universe probably will be thirty five? He's older. I think he's in his forties actually. He's thirty eight. Um, it's close. Yeah, I I know, but like in terms of him as in his like career, he's like on year two, so he's younger. But it's interesting that the Batman choice they're going with is an older Batman when this feels like this is like a youth new, like youth universe. And we just got old Batman with Ben Affleck. Basically we skipped the whole career and got the very end of it. So anyways, that's totally side note, but I think Glenn Powell could be a cool Batman. Um, I don't disagree. I, but you know, I'm the Marvel guy. I was really hoping he'd be like Cyclops or something. Yeah, that's a good point. Every single day, yeah, he would make a great Cyclops. Yeah, the wow. pictures of him as Cyclops, like the fan oh, art, like those. dude, he looks like he could get straight yeah. out of the pages, Cyclops. Yeah, I think that if it's the older Batman we're talking about, Alan Richardson, even more so would fit that bill because mm. he could totally play like the brooding, angry, the world is against him vibe, right? Um. But yeah, I mean, I'm all over the place. Uh, I mean, other things that six men, I know we're way over our normal time frame yeah, for we're it, good. but we're good. Um, uh, other things, reminders, August 1st, Batman the Cape Crusader drops. Um, as we get closer to it, a little bit more info keeps getting dropped. Um, there was, I don't remember if this dropped before our last episode or if we talked about, but there was a new trailer that dropped where we got like, the voice act like Batman's new voice. And he, I was nervous without Kevin Conroy mm -hmm. that we wouldn't have like 
that quality of voice, but holy shit, dude, he sounds awesome. And I should have looked it up before the episode. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but Hamish. Um, yeah, Hamish. That is correct. That is correct. Um, Hamish Castle link later, right? Yes, yes. Um, mm-hmm. man, there's so many people that's going to be in that. But anyways, it comes out on the first. I'm so excited about that. They're doing. There's a panel. There's they're doing a panel at Comic Con. I should have looked it up before, but I can't remember if they're going to walk through like the overall theme of the series or what they were going to talk about. But I know they're going to mm-hmm. do something there, so we'll probably get some new news from that. I'm um, assuming we'll hear some stuff because we've really only had the one trailer for Cape Crusader, and we're ten days out. So I'm know. surprised we haven't seen much more. To be honest. That trailer, though, fuck, I can't remember if we talked about that on the last last episode, if that had came out after or before. No, we talked about it. It just looks, it has such a great vibe. Yeah. I am so excited for that show to come right. out. Um, other things we're getting close to, I think way back when the pod started, I had, it was like one of my very first Six of Midnights was the Star Wars Outlaws game that was announced. I've talked about it a couple of times, but it's basically you're a, it's like a giant open world. You're a scoundrel. You're a Han Solo type character that comes out uh, August 30th. So we're getting close to that too. Um, video games were like in, we're in a great time for games right now. Um, there's a new game I've been playing this week that I had never heard of. And randomly someone, did you ever play the, uh the like bio shock yeah games mm-hmm. um bioshock infinite is like in the any original bioshock is like set way back in the early 1920s time vi- period vibes but like if those were in the future if that makes sense um someone randomly posted like a trailer for a video game that it's called Nobody Wants to Die. And it literally looks just like Bioshock if it was in like the Blade Runner universe. And obviously, sign me up. It was like 25 mm-hmm. bucks. I bought it and I'm fucking loving it. You're a detective in the future. It is a like 1920s, made it all the way to 2022. You're in futuristic, like New York detective. You're looking out for a homicide. It's very, it's, it's right up that Blade Runner game alley. So I've been playing that. I'm in a gaming vibe. Other video games, college football just dropped. College football, 2025. It's been 11 years. <laughs> we finally get Lock it. the doors. I'm busy. I know. I haven't started yet because I know you'll lose me. We'll have another three-week hiatus if I fucking download it. So uh, You should just do it. Anyways, we've been talking forever. Let's jump into it. Yeah, We're 30 minutes to it. in. That takes us into our big premiere movie of the week, the 2024 action thriller disaster film, Twisters. So Twisters is produced and distributed by Warner Brothers and Universal in partnership with Amblin Entertainment, uh, directed by Lee Isaac Chung, who uh, had just gotten a critical acclaim for his work on the film Minari. Um, it's written by, story by Joseph Kaczynski, who did Top Gun Maverick and was originally supposed to direct this. Um, but had a scheduling conflict with because he's directing the new uh, F1 Formula One movie. Um, which and then, looks good. Which does look good because we got a teaser and that's not till next year. But um, and then the screenplay is by Mark L. Smith. The cast includes Daisy Edgar Jones as Kate Carter, Glenn Powell as Tyler Owens, Anthony Ramos as Javi, uh, Brandon Perea as Boone, and Maura Tier- Tierney as Kathy Carter which is Kate's mother and way down on the bottom of the list, David Cornsweat as hobby's partner, Scott, which is yeah, none, he's in, he's in none of the trailers. Yeah. Where did that come from? I'll be honest I with you. I so, texted you during the movie. It was right. like, Holy shit. I'm pretty sure that's David Cornsweat. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, David Cornsweat's in this movie. Like last night I, I follow Cornsweat on Instagram. Right. And in any way, last week he's like sending pictures with him and like, Glenn Powell and, and uh, uh, Daisy Edgar Jones. And he's like, oh, I miss the gang. And then it's like him and Anthony Ramos. And I'm like, is he, is he in this fucking movie? Is he in Twisters? Yeah, like I had no idea. They kept right. that on the, on the so, 
down low. Yeah, and I'm like, he's not in any of the trailers. Why wouldn't you market Corin Sweat in this movie? He, like, and it's War- and Warner Brothers is part of this. Like, he's your Superman. And then I saw the movie, and I was like, yeah, like, oh, this is why he's he's a. It's actually his acting's not the best, and he's kind of a sleazeball. So it's like, oh, I get it, jerk. Yeah. yeah. I He's saying lines that you'd never want to hear Superman ever say. So, so I, that a hundred percent is the reason they didn't market it because they yes. don't want people to. Which do. I wonder, like, did he make this movie or was a part of this movie before he was cast as Superman or started Superman stuff? I don't, I don't think so because this movie was filming last summer and actually because of the mm. strike didn't finish till December. So, I mean, he was probably already bulking up by the time that they finished filming this because, yeah, I don't know. I just, it, it was an odd choice because I literally texted you. I was like, I can't believe they let Superman say whatever this fucking line was. Like, I don't care about the people. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I it's, don't care about the people. You need to help the one, people. One, one, I don't care about the people. Let him die. That's fucking Superman. He doesn't say that. Doesn't he matter would, what he, universe he's in. He would never. He would You never. need to leave. <laughs> yeah um anyway yeah. Back, back to the movie at hand uh twisters had a <laughs> budget of estimated at 155 million dollars um and in its opening weekend it made 81.2 domestic and 124.8 international for total total gross um it exceeded all expectations for its opening weekend it was projected nice. open around projected open around 50 to 55 million and it blew past that um get it blue pet anyway I see, um, what there. <laughs> see what i did there but uh yeah it's uh listen won't won't get into the spoilers yet we'll give you the spoiler warning for that if you're a fan of the original twister mm-hmm. you will love this movie yeah it's it's the vibe is it they the only thing i thought is i thought maybe this one was a little darker I feel like they were not as afraid in the sequel of having a body count. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, mm-hmm. we, we're, so I just rewatched the original last week, right? Cause it felt like Des watched it um, for the first time and he loved it by the way. And he was like, I need to see the new one. I'm totally, yeah. totally man. Let's, let's go. I, I took, yeah, that's who, I took Grayson with me yesterday. Oh, nice. He saw it, so good. Um, but yeah, we watched the original and he's like, you know, obviously Helen Hunt's dad dies at the very beginning in the flashback scene, right? Then you get through most of the movie and it's like, it's implied, you know, people die. Like, the, you know, people died at the drive-in. Like, there was no way they didn't. Like, the town where the aunt lives when they come to save her and pull her out of the house that's collapsing. Like, you know, people are dead. Mm-hmm. But the only people you, like, really see die are, like, Carrie Elwes' slimy other meteorologist character in, in his car. Like, that's, that's oh, about yeah. all you see die in that movie. This one, like, they didn't care. We're like, we're, we'll let people die. It's yeah. but other than that, and it's not graphic or anything. It's just like, oh, okay, that's that happened. Yeah, they're, um, they're very willy nilly with at least the storm chasers are like, <laughs> they're like, tornado, let's get in it. Oh yeah, get inside I, of it. Totally. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, very good vibe. Very much like the original. Lots of yeah. fun great characters like i thought glenn powell's tyler owens was awesome like he kind of gives you that that vibe you know like in the remember in the original like they're talking about bill paxton like they called him the extreme and how crazy he was and stuff yeah you get that vibe from glenn powell right away because he's like i don't care i'll go right into the freaking tornado he's a Um, cowboy he's a tornado wrangler that's that's exactly right it's uh it's a lot of fun highly highly recommend especially if you like disaster films if you liked the original twister and it's a ton of fun to see in the big screen i would totally say please please go see it yeah this is a this was like this feels like a good old fashioned like blockbuster movie theater movie this mm-hmm. is a summer movie theater movie like all of the like when the original Twisters came out, it was a big deal. Like there was a ride mm-hmm. at like Universal Studios that was there forever. Like the like practical effects in the original was like a big deal. Like and this movie, a lot of behind the the behind the scenes stuff they talk about like practical effects. Obviously, they they can't like make a real tornado, but right. 
there was a ton of practical effects and, and set pieces and stuff that they did that makes the movie feel way more realistic. Using jet engines blowing at 180 miles an hour to create wind effects. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. It, it was, it was, you got like, I don't know, like there's like shark tornado. Obviously we're comparing very different movies, but like you don't shark ever get Nado. a feeling that the, yeah, shark tornado. you never get a feel that like, those tornadoes are real. Like it's all super fake, but this movie did a great job of like giving you that feel. It was like you said, everything from the first movie probably like turned up to 10, I would say just in terms of like, all right, let's, let's do what we did in the first movie, but let's give them more tornadoes. That's what the people want. So we're going to give them a lot of tornadoes. So right. um, I think in the first movie, you only see like actually three, or four tornadoes and this you see like three or four every like 20 minutes so it, was, it felt that way yeah for sure yeah. i mean it really good anyway highly recommend see it in the go theaters see it. go, go see, see it, it. it's theaters. a lot of fun you'll enjoy it spoiler warning see yourself to the exit yeah get out get tons of fun like dude uh, what a fun movie what a freaking blast. blast you're right though that was the first thing i said was um I, I was very high on fall guy which i don't think you've seen yet but yet. very high on fall guy just like a good old fashioned sitting in the movie theater, eating popcorn and drinking a soda pop, watching shit blow up and, and mm -hmm. big action set pieces. That's the way I felt about fall guy. And that's exactly how I felt about this movie. Yes. Tons of fun, great characters. You know, the only character, like I, like I felt like, you know, you're getting, you're getting Glenn Powell instead of Bill Paxton. Right. And like, I yeah. like Bill Paxton a lot. Glenn Powell does a great job um daisy edgar jones she, she's okay she's a little dull to me compared to yep. like helen hunt I thought helen hunt's character was a little bit more fleshed out but uh there's a little bit more trauma with daisy edgar jones so she, it, it's fresh yes. trauma helen hunt's already been through her trauma by the time you meet yeah. her in that movie um i liked anthony ramos i liked um boone he was a lot of fun. I really liked Glenn yeah. Powell's whole team. They were a lot of yeah, fun. They, were, they gave the vibe of the original yes. Swisser movie. Yeah, like and Boone, Boone tag. you could tell like Boone's trying to channel that Philip Seymour Hoffman yes. Dusty character. Yeah. Doesn't Boone. quite get it. Yes. Boone. Yeah. Boone. He, that, he's my favorite character from the original, Dusty. Yes. Is, and that was before Philip Seymour Hoffman really was... But before um, anyone knew who he was yeah exactly and uh boone does a good job of that he's you know you see him in the trailer and he's like we're twins we got yeah. we got we twins, got twins. <laughs> yeah he, there's a funny moment where like uh the cowboy wrangler tyler has left kind of the group to go with the yeah. with kate and there was a tornado and like boone is like really butthurt at him for like leaving him. It's like kicking a can. <laughs> yeah, like he's really upset that he ditched him. <laughs> and he like puts his arm around. He's like, I'll let you shoot some rockets. <laughs> he's like, You want to shoot some rockets into a tornado? <laughs> yeah, it's rockets. So, really? Uh, okay, so there were some parts of this movie multiple times where I my eyes touched my spine. They rolled so hard. I'm like, okay, like, come on. And then I had to remind myself that this is a fucking tornado movie. Mm. And it's also like we like it can't be grounded in reality if you want cool, interesting, like things happening in a tornado. Movie. Right. So multiple times I had to catch myself where I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Well, OK, cool. Like when he fucking drives in the first time he drives into the tornado and he shoots the fucking fireworks up in it. I'm like, OK, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. He's got PVC pipes on the side. <laughs> Boone yeah. loads fireworks and then they, they literally funny. shoot him into the middle of the tornado. He just drives yeah. right into it. Like that yeah. part, I was like, get the fuck out of here. And then it just felt like everywhere they went, every it was like when he goes and grabs her and he takes her to the ro this rodeo because he wants to get her. Something's clearly more, there's more to her that, that meets the eye and he wants to get to know her. So he brings her to this fucking rodeo and then like an F5 tornado hits the rodeo. Just yeah. hits right on them. Right where the tornado people in the tornado movie are. It's fucking right where they're mm -hmm. at. And I'm like, okay, yeah, of course a fucking tornado <laughs> follows them. And no one knew that was coming. It just right. came out of nowhere. The tornado people had no idea. 
So, <laughs> so started. I loved it though. I, I, I know, loved I agree. it. And, and, and I've talked about this before. Like, remember when we did our guilty pleasure list, and I was like, disaster film, disaster film. Like, they are yeah. so full of shit, but they're so <laughs> much fun. Right. Like, they're just yes. entertainment. Uh, let's rewind. Start from the beginning. So. Yep, sorry. No, you're no, no, you're good. So Kate, Daisy Edgar Jones character Kate is a college student. Her and her friends, I think there's like five of them, right? Javi's one of them, Anthony Ramos, and he's like the technical guy, right? He's the one that monitors everything back from the van. While it's like her and her boyfriend, and then her two other friends drive into the tornado. Okay, so a couple things. So one, on their rig, they have a Dorothy 5, which if you remember from the original Twisters, they have Dorothy 1 through 4. So this is labeled Dorothy 5. It's clearly the exact same machine. It has mm -hmm. little sensors in it with the little propeller things that they make in the original one in it. And they're going to shoot these up to sensor and get readings of the tornado. Now, the whole point of the original Twisters was to get the original Twister was to get this machine into the tornado so they could learn more about them and create an early warning system because they're going to find out how they're built. Clearly that did not happen because mm -hmm. like you said, that tornado dropped on the rodeo and nobody knew it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, God. we had a huge tornado outbreak here just a couple months ago. And like, yes. we all knew where the tornadoes were well in advance. Yeah, I'm not saying that this, this can't movie... be better, but... The timing of this movie is pretty crazy because the whole movie concept they're talking about. Yes. This tornado, this like never before seen tornado outbreak. And so they, they give you a little like there's a reason why there's so many of these things. Because we all know like every like three years we get like a real tornado warning. Mm -hmm. Roughly. Like they come and yep. go every year. But it. Usually it's like every couple of years we've got, oh, fuck, we need to go down in the basement. Um, so Some for people. there to be like, yeah, true. Most Nebraskans go out to the front yard. Got to get pictures. Um, but this, so for, so for, as someone who now lives in like the tornado alley kind of area, that's, I think, where a lot of my like, oh, come on. Like, yeah. guys, you're not going to have fucking 15 tornadoes in one area. Fucking. But we just had this happen. <laughs> We Couple are having the busiest weather summer on record. So yes. yeah, it it does it does hit close to home this year. I will say, you know, continue. But anyway, so Kate's big thing is she's trying to get a grant. She's developed this like system where she releases these barrels of like a a polyurethane absorbent that's like not harmful. It's non toxic. But what it does is it basically pulls all the moisture out of the tornado to kill it. And they even make a point to say, it's like, it's the same stuff you find in diapers to absorb, you know, whatever. Anyway, she drives, they drive it in, they get into the tornado. It's rain wrapped. They can't see the tornado's close by. They get Dorothy off the ground. Right. And it starts picking up readings in this tornado is massive and they can't see it. And the Anthony Ramos is like, you guys got to get out of there. This is huge. turns out, of course, it's this massive F5 tornado. Right. Mm -hmm. They end up wrecking the car. They have nowhere to go. And they debate, do we go under this overpass or do we stay in the car? Well, they all decide to run for the overpass. Kate's the only one that lives. Every mm -hmm. one of her friends, we watch them get sucked into the tornado, including yeah. her boy boyfriend and her friends. Kate, meanwhile, has like a pole, like hit her thigh, and she has this huge like bleeding all over the place. There's Kate's trauma, right? So fast mm -hmm. forwards to five years later. Javi's now working for this company that has like military technology where they set up like a triangulation system around the tornadoes to like 3D map them mm -hmm. so that they can work on better more. It's like think of it Dorothy on steroids, right? Like it's a more advanced system can 3D map a tornado, triangulate all this wind speeds and stuff like that. It's military technology, blah, blah, blah. Mm hmm. He goes to visit Kate. She's now working at a, you know, she's got her meteorological degree. She's working in New York. She's, I don't know exactly what she does, but you can tell from the beginning, Kate has this feel for the way the weather develops, right? Mm -hmm. Like very much like Bill Paxton did in the original Twister, like where you can read it and you can, you know, you sprinkle some grass and you can see the clouds and you can tell what's going on, right? Just the way yep. she does it. And you can tell she still does that when she sees things on the radar, when she looks at pictures and stuff, because they kind of foreshadow that. Anthony comes and finds her. Anthony Ramos' Javi character comes and finds her. I'm doing this thing. We're, we're, I've got a team. We've got all this tech. 
We want to drop these things around a tornado. You know tornadoes better than anybody. I need you to come help me, right? Yep. She says, no, I'm done with that. She's very standoffish. She doesn't go back to Oklahoma. She doesn't talk to anybody anymore. She's just, she's tra- she's got trauma from watching all her friends die. Eventually, she decides to go back, right? She's going to do it. She's going to do it for one week and one week only, and then she's coming home, going back to New York. So she goes, right? We meet Tyler Owens and his crew immediately. We get the Tornado Wrangler. They they interact right away, okay? And you can tell he's interested in her, especially because she's a city girl and he's from Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And he wants to know what she's doing there and wants, he's like, starts picking her brain. She's like, oh, you should go this way. This is what's going to happen. And he's like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. And then he waits and he follows her. She goes the opposite way. Obviously, Mm -hmm. leaving him the other way. Tornado develops. He drives into it. Fireworks. Yada, yada. Very simple plot, right? That's that's how this is going. Well, it turns out her buddy, Javi, isn't quite on the up and up. Him and his partner, Scott, not Superman, David Morton, Scott, opposite uh, of right Superman. actually are working for this like re this real estate guy who after all these people's homes are destroyed he swoops in and he buys their land so that he can tear everything down and build new houses and sell them. yeah yeah so that's who javi's actually working for he's not trying to help people he's trying to make money mm-hmm. home at, at people's expenses that are losing everything that they own right and tyler kind of leads her to believe that more tornado action is happening right in the meanwhile, but she figures it out, gets pissed, takes Javi's truck and goes home, right? Goes to her mom's house. Anything you want to add in there that I'm missing? No, I think so. Like the one thing I want to say about her character that I've just mentioned multiple times throughout this movie. I'm like, geez. Okay. Really? Okay. But the one thing that they nailed that because I agree she did not give the same vibes as the original Twisters main gal um, but the one thing she like fucking nailed was when they sh- when you meet her at the beginning when all of her friends are alive her boyfriend and blah 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 she is the super extra energy goofball like right is to- a total character like she you could tell she's like she hasn't had anything happen in her life to bring her down and she is just the ray of sunshine she's acting weird as hell because she's with her friends and the people that love her and she's a goofball and then they all die in front of her or technically holding on to her and then get sucked out and then the rest of the movie in the future after this happened she is never like that in the rest of the movie. But then they flash back to her later on in the movie when she's at her mom's house, back when she's younger, before all that happened. And she's back to being like a total goofball. So, like, that's one thing I think this movie randomly really, like, nailed is, like, how much, like, losing someone can, like, totally change who you are, how you act. Like, like that like as someone who's had something like that yeah. happen like i was like like holy shit they have fucking nailed this and i don't know if a lot of people have picked up on that but i didn't i didn't even think about that but you you're dead on because you're right because like when they go back to the her house and they're in the barn and they're like watching old videos where she's like prepping her models and stuff and she's all like yeah jumping all around and like making funny faces and yeah, acting just all, being like total you're, like you're weird goofy character right. and... she's a different person Completely. And she's like fucking stone cold, like the the world has burned me forever. Right. Like so I the, so anyways, like I oh, you're right. That's as great. I was watching the movie and there was multiple times where I was like, oh, okay. That little subtle like underlying yeah. thing was like, God damn, that is I feel you. I feel Boy, that's a good point. You know, I didn't think about that. That that probably is a lot more to do with how she acted in that character. So you're you're right. You're dead on. And I probably need to reevaluate kind of how I thought about that. Um, I think, but I I I like that she. I thought it was cool that they gave her like not a superpower, but she's just like like you said, she has like an extra ordinary ability to be able to read 
storms, which plays a huge part in this whole thing. Like mm. the second she shows up, she doesn't, she's reluctant. She doesn't want to go back and chase storms. Well, the first like what, tornado and I left this out, like her and Anthony Ramos are, they have to drop the third part of the triangulation to get this view of the tornado. She freezes. She can't do it. And they yeah, have to leave. Yep. It's like they were this close to getting the thing that they brought her all the way out there for. And then like she gets to, she locks up, which was another thing that I thought of like, she's like traumatized. She doesn't want anything to do with this. Why? Cause how they set up Why is she in this, that car. Yes. I, so like how they triangulate is one car has to get basically follow and get behind it. One car has to get on the side of it. And then one car has to get like fucking directly in front of it. So there's two cars that are very safe areas while they're setting up. And then there's one that's like about to get hit by a fucking train is kind of what it feels like. Yep. And so they put the most traumatized person in the car where she's like looking at this tornado where five years ago she was in the same zone and all of her friends got sucked up and died. Right. Yeah. The so, only friend that's still alive is next to her right in front of the tornado. Yeah, right, doing it again. Right. Which like. Which they had very much established that she, that her love for this was killed. Maybe not killed, but like she won't, she will never want to be a part of that again because it hurt her so much mm -hmm. and that she would never do that. And then here we go, like fucking 24 hours later, she's just right there trying to stick this radar down and she does freeze. But um, I do fucking love Tyler. Glenn Powell's character in this, mm -hmm. the tornado tornado wrangler is he's a badass man. He's yeah. a ton of fun. The whole, like he's an idiot. Yeah. He's a total, well, he, he is, a, I mean, he I mean, plays, like he the plays driving the, into the tornado shit. He's, oh yeah. He's an idiot. That way. He does stupid shit, but it's, it's like, he is, his character is like a YouTuber essentially like yep. him and his, tornado crew just like the original crew they're not like like a scientific purposes they, they don't have all the to... bells and whistles they don't have all the fancy technology and stuff they're more basic and but they still yes. they still have a purpose yeah like they have all their own equipment and cool shit to do but their stuff is all primarily focused on trying to get cool youtube content as he's wrangling tornadoes like we said earlier, driving into the middle of one, he's got these cool like contraption on his truck that like drills into the ground. It pulls the truck down mm -hmm. his like super cowboyed up truck and then like has fucking firework rockets and stuff. They've got like a, a drone that they fly yeah. all to catch like cool content. But um, I, I liked that it felt like the original movie where there's these, all these different tornado chasing groups that are all like they're chasing separately. They're kind of competitive. And then at the end of the day, they're all at the same hotel area kind of rubbing elbows between. I thought that was fun. It was second tornado. They run into is the one where they splits into two and it's twins. Right. And so yeah. twins, her, twins, twins. We got twins. And uh, Glenn Powell is the, you know, twins, they're, special twins. They're, they're deciding which one's going to die first. Right. And all the data says it's this one. So David Corn sweats like that one's going to die. We need to follow the one on, you know, the one on the right. And Glenn Powell's like, nah, the, the, it's not right for that one. We need to follow the one on the right. And Daisy Edgar Jones is like, she's watching the wind and the way it's moving. And she sees the wind change and she goes, no, we need to follow the one on the left. That's the one that's going to stay. Mm -hmm. So, and then, of course, David Corn sweats like, "Who's really in charge here?" You know, he's like, "I don't care." <laughs> yeah, I don't care about Bizarro people. Superman, dickhead. You're right, fucking Bizarro. That's who it was. Um, anyway, they they get the triangulation. The third, she gets, she drops the third one, but it gets sucked into the tornado. But they got to go find it. But she's like telling Anthony Ramos, "You can find it later. We got to help the people whose town was just hit. Like we got to, we got to help them." And he's like, "Oh, I got to do this, you know, blah blah blah." And she's like, "No, we need help them." So they go and help them. And then, of course, David Cornswood's like, we need to leave, you know, because he's yeah. a dick. And uh, they end up leaving. And that's when she goes back to her hotel. Glenn Powell shows up, brings her pizza. And then he's like, I want to learn more about you. They had figured out he had figured out who she was by then. Right. Because She mm -hmm. never tells him who her last name is. They think yeah. she's from New York. She's from Oklahoma. She was a college student. All her friends died in this F5. They figure out who she is. And then she actually knows her shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call her city girl for the whole movie, making fun of her. And when she, right. like, 
early on they establish she's from Oklahoma. She even says a line like, God, I love Oklahoma, as she's just like in her world of tornado chasing before everybody died. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was cool too. Of like she yes. she didn't like immediately rebuttal of like, Don't call me city girl, I'm from Oklahoma. She All would right. just let them think their thing. Yeah, think your thing. As she fucking finagled her magic. All right. Totally cool scene though where they're at the rodeo. Tornado shows up. Very reminiscent of the drive-in scene in the original Twister. You could yeah, the same yeah. total vibe. Um, it was actually, originally, I, f- I found this out in the original script. It was supposed to take place at an Oklahoma State College baseball game, which I thought was really cool. Oh. And the new director, because Joseph Kaczynski had wrote that part of the story, the new director's like, what if we did a rodeo? I feel like that'd be kind of fun. And they went with it, and I think that was the right choice. because I think Oh, yeah, fit to- right totally, totally cool. But like this tornado shows up, and these people are like, Shit's happening. They're getting sucked into the tornado. Fun fact, um, they go into a hotel and ask if they have a basement. And there's a guy at the counter and he's being a dick. And he's like, wait your turn, you know. And his girlfriend's like, oh, tornadoes will never show up. You know, like it's all <laughs> yeah. warnings are fake. Um, yeah, they but- said the most Nebraska line ever. Like Whatever. they like when anyone talks about there being tornadoes. My wife, every time I'm like, oh, my God, there's a tornado warning or watch or whatever, she's like, she says, though, nine times out of time, out of ten, it's not real. Like, nine yeah, times it's, out it's of just, ten, it's, it's not just rotation. Tornado. It's not real. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, they literally said it in the movie. Okay. As there's a fucking F5, like, Oof, right behind I don't, him. It was big. It wasn't that big. But whatever. Anyway, the guy at the counter was James Paxton. He's Bill Paxton's son. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we got to do a cameo, and then him and his girlfriend go out and get in the truck, and they immediately get sucked into it and die. <laughs> they got fucking – they – again, another mo- moment in the movie where I'm like, bro, you know – you have now – he was very much like a non-believer of that there was a tornado, but at this point, he had ran outside and had now seen there was a huge tornado, mm-hmm. and he gets – and he does the thing that he that everyone's telling him not to do or you'll die. He just goes and gets in his car and fucking drives one foot before it gets fucking sucked up. Yeah, it's like so, it's the hotel sign on the way up. Yes. Like, it, you didn't get very way, far. Way to take care of Bill Paxton's son. You made him like a total was a cool scene. character. He was the guy <laughs> in the hotel that gets sucked up, and you're like, oh, I know who that was. Uh, but they find, yeah. like, an empty pool at the hotel, and they anchor to the pipes, and that's pretty cool. She ends up saving this mom and her and her kid because she, they anchor down on the bottom of the pool. Pretty neat. Um mm-hmm. Fast forward, we get to the end. She's now with Glenn Powell because he had come to the farm when she had returned home. She was given up. She was done after that night because she kind of got sucked into the tornado in Javi's truck um, and had, you know, she was kind of freaked out. But she drives home when she finds out Javi's a piece of shit, right? And he's working for this real estate guy. So she leaves and she drives home. While she's there, Glenn Powell shows up. And, of course, her mom's like, ooh, he's cute. Stay the night. And they... (laughs) They spend time in the, she, she's like, he offers to help her when he finds out what she had done for like her project. Did she want to kill a tornado? And that's, you see it in the trailer and he's like, you want to get a chance? You know, I'll give you a chance. That kind of thing. It's a, the wife and liar, liar. That's yeah. where she was from. Yeah, I more, could more not yep. think of what movie she was from. Yeah. The wife and liar, liar. Sorry. Continue. There you go. <laughs> Um, anyway, so they like they get Javi to come. He apologizes. He's like, I know, I, you, you know I'm doing this for the wrong reasons. I understand. And she's like, I need your data that you got from your 3D model because I need to redo my computer model to see if I can find out how to kill a tornado. They weren't using enough stuff for the moisture. They basically have to get the inside to collapse because they weren't like, there's science talk and you're just sitting there like, yeah, again, it's all bullshit. But there's science talk and basically they weren't accounting for the moisture not in the tornado, like the rain and stuff. So they needed more stuff to kill it. So they they put the model in her and Glenn Powell figured out, they load up this giant flatbed trailer with these barrels of whatever it is, absorbent, and they head out. And there's a tornado developing near El Reno, Oklahoma, which this El is another, Reno. Yeah. another fun fact. The massive tornado in El Reno is based on the 2013 massive tornado that destroyed parts of El Reno, Oklahoma. And they filmed all the exterior shots in El Reno. It was filmed in El Reno, too. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of a cool She's just dredging up fucking a lot of people's trauma. Right. Whisters. This tornado hits like an oil refinery and, like, 
turns into a fire nato which is it's pretty badass dude okay so that is one of the things that they like i just imagine them sitting in a pitch room where they're like yep. all right what are two what are cool things we could do with this tornado movie sharks yeah <laughs> sharks or fire fire and my son when i said we were going to go see this movie he was he was like oh that's the movie that has the fire tornadoes because they show it in the trailer yep and when we got home late last night like he walked in and my wife was like oh what was your favorite part he was like the fire tornado 100 so percent. it was, it was pretty badass it was such a dude thing like it was fucking cool the yep. fire tornadoes were dope it was cool Basically, they end up going to El Reno. They're like, we got to go help these people. They drive into El Reno. They're trying to get, there's like a big farmer's market. Like people are selling mm -hmm. stuff. They're trying to get them all into a shelter. Again, why are all these people just sitting in the middle of the town square selling shit when there's an F5, like a mile away, that's gigantic? It's for the movie. I get it. But they, the shelter's full. We got as many people in there as we could. We need to find a place with a basement. So they go into a movie theater. There's no basement. They're all like holding onto the seats. Which also, we live in the Midwest. Yeah. Everywhere has a basement. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it was probably. weird to me that they didn't, right? Yeah, was especially, that not weird? In, especially in Oklahoma. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, they don't have, maybe they don't have basements. I don't know. I'm not from there. But they go into this movie theater, and then the, the tornado's getting close to town. Like, it's ripping the roof off the, the, the theater. And, and she's like, she steals the truck, and she's like, I'm going to go kill this thing. And... Yeah. So basically she drives into it. She anchors down and the tornado's too big, but she ends up killing the tornado and saving everybody. It was pretty badass. It's a pretty badass scene because she just drives into the thing. Yeah. Um, another fun fact they had originally in the ending, she leaves to go back to New York. There's, 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 you know, attraction between her and Tyler. You can tell it's there, but they never, they never yeah. touch it. They never touch it. And so I found out and then that, that, that Steven Spielberg made that choice. Oh. They had originally filmed an ending where they kiss at the end. And he's like, no, I want this to be about she's coming back because she's about the tornadoes, not about him. And he, it feels like it cheapens the character. And I thought that was a good call because I felt like that was the better ending. Like you could tell there's an attraction between the two, but they never it's never about that. And I thought that was a good choice. It was, yeah, it was a great choice. Because it was very noticeable, like that they had a thing for each other, right? Like any typical movie with love interest in the middle of this thing, but that they didn't like their, they didn't have sex and weren't making out at any point. There was right. a couple of times where you thought they were going to, and even at the end, especially, yeah, and they didn't. And I like, like clocked that of like, I don't think. They never kissed in this movie, no. Nope. Which is like, I'm sure the actress was like, "What the fuck? I get to be in a movie with Glenn Powell and I don't well, get to make it. out with they him." They did film that scene, oh, so, okay. I mean, so she got it. She got filmed. that for herself. So um, it's, it's the alternate ending. It'll be on the Blu-ray. I I didn't know that 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 was a Steven Spielberg choice, but he made that. It choice. was it was a noticeable thing. That I I agree, thought. and I think it was the right decision. Huh. Um, yeah. It's That's, realistic like that. Yes. Post credit, you kind of get like a mid credit scenes where it looks very much like her, Tyler and Javi are working together. Right. So <laughs> Javi kind of has a little bit of a redemption arc there in the end in El Reno and good, which is good because, you know, they were friends and stuff. Um, yeah. Hamilton. I like Anthony Ramos too, um, which I, apparently he's going to be a Marvel character. He's going to play the Red Hood. Which I think is cool because he's a that's a very like not super well known villain, but it's he's kind of a cool character. So. He's really yeah. leaning into his villain the hood. era. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. Yeah. The hood's cool. Um, listen, the plot's pretty simple. It's a tornado movie. The tornadoes are awesome. The characters are actually really good. I enjoyed it a lot. It's an eight. I had a lot of yeah. fun. A lot oh, of fun. yeah. That's an eight for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely an eight. Go I see won't it. give it a nine. No. It's, a, it's a, actually in the movie theaters, it's a nine. I'll 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 say this is how I'm gonna rate this movie. In the movie theater at like an IMAX, it's a nine movie. When it gets to home, it'll be an eight. 
if you stream there, it on Helpa tonight. That's, that's a, a lot of way fun. to root it, but right something it else I read today, which I thought was a super fun fact. So you're familiar with like the the 40x theaters where it's like the seats move. Oh and yeah, the fucking this this movie sold more tickets than any other movie ever had in that format like double oh, like had double the next month awesome yeah i mean like people were talking about how the seats were moving and there was like water spraying them and yes. stuff like that well, would be do pretty we have neat. one anywhere near us i don't think so we should find all one the movies that have come out in many years that's like the one that should oh, be for I totally that. agree oh. i'd be the kind of thing to definitely see in it um listen lots of fun go see it twisters twisters yeah. highly 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 recommend it just felt like the first movie I've been to the theater in a long time where there was a lot of people. Like at yeah. every showing, there was a ton of people yeah. at it. It was so. busy, and obviously it did a lot of money. It's a, the third biggest opening of the year so far behind Inside Out 2 and barely Dune 2. Like Dune 2 only made like a million dollars more. So it was like wow. since that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man. Anyway, that takes us into my favorite segment. There can be only four. Only five. So back to there could be only five. Last episode, we did our top five for the first half of 2024. It's the end of July. We're halfway through the year. What wouldn't be better? What would be better than doing our top five most anticipated movies for the back half of 2024? I'll be honest. I had a hard time with this list. Mm. I got my first three movies pretty quick. Then I got my fourth one. And then my fifth one, I wasn't sure. I mean, it was like I was rotating movies in. I was like, uh. and then honestly, a trailer came out during our two week hiatus. Number five, Gladiator (laughs) 2. Nice. Gladiator 2 is nice. my number five because I that trailer was better than I thought. Fucking it awesome. Rocked a lot. Of, oh my god. Did you hear all the people who were mad about the song? What they know. Okay, that song is yes. awesome mm-hmm. already. And having that in this in this setting, yep. I actually thought is what made it even cooler. Was specifically because I'm of in your song. camp. I thought the song made it better. Yeah, people want like Roman, I know, like gladiator, opera, vo- angelic voices. I thought it was fucking dope. I and thought it's it was got too. Denzel, like exactly, like Denzel looked, Pedro looked cool, like no, nope. I was, I'm a Paul Mescal looked awesome, dude. They all like, look. They like, did it. I was blown away by that trailer. I was a lot more impressed with it than I thought I was going to be. So I was pretty happy. Solidified its spot at number five on my list. All right. Nice. At number four, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Listen, we're getting a legacy sequel to a movie that was big in the 80s when I was a kid. My One of my daughter's favorite movies growing up, and I think Michael Keaton's a badass. So I'm on board 100%. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is my number four movie that I'm looking forward to in the back half. And number three, uh, Robert Eggers' Nosferatu at number three. We got the first trailer for that. Man, it looks creepy as hell. God, it looks good. I'm so I'm pumped to see Skarsgård as Count, Count Orlock. Yeah. We got Defoe. We got him. We got all Nicholas Holt. We got all these characters. And the boy, man, does it look, it looks, the, the art, the set pieces and stuff. It looks like it's going to be a cool movie. So I have looks that at number like three. It's going to be epic. I know. And I hate to do this, but like my number one and my number two movies are like coming out soon. So number two, I have alien Romulus. I am mm-hmm. pumped every time I see a new trailer for that movie. I am like, I feel like it, it captures the vibe of the first movie. I'm Fetty Alvarez. I think is a great director. I thought his evil dead remake was epic. I'm totally on board for seeing what he does with it. Alien Romulus is number two. Feels like a cop out. It feels like a gimme, but number one is the movie we're seeing next week. It's Deadpool and Wolverine. Like there is mm-hmm. no other movie that I even give a remote shit about if I <laughs> compared to that one. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to happen. I don't know what we're going to see, but it feels like an event movie, right? Like, yep. It feels like it's going to be No Way Home. It feels like it's going to be In Game, Infinity War. Like it feels like that's what we're getting. I'm just excited to see something like that again. And yes, Hugh Jackman in the yellow suit. 
and you know they still have we still haven't gotten to see him in the trailers or tv spots with the cowl on i mean that theater is gonna point. hoop and holler the first time we see that let's be honest gosh damn it's gonna be good nice uh like your list hmm. we're we've got some similarities figured um i when you said we were doing this i like for a brief moment was kind of like fuck i don't feel like there's really anything other than what's coming out next week i feel like there's not a lot of movies coming out and then as i was looking at the release schedules like okay yep. there's some move there's more coming out than i thought um but that was that was my issue it was like i mean i i want to see the third venom but i'm not super excited like i want to see craven but i'm not super excited like i want to nope. see red one but I'm not super excited. I'm just, there was nothing that was like, Ooh, yeah, let's, I really want to see that. Yeah. Um, I have three honorable mentions. One you just named Craven. I'm, I didn't have it on my top five, like, Oh, I want to see it. But when their first trailer came out for it, it looked fucking awesome. And I'm pretty Two sure years I ago. my top five, like excited to see uh, this same list last year yeah it was going to come out last year same yeah, time so probably um which made more sense because it had like they had like just like unveiled it and then said it was coming out like three months later originally when we got like that trailer i feel like yeah. but craven i think will be fun that's exciting the there's a new like I don't want to say Pixar type animation movie, but there's a Transformers movie. It's like a kid movie. Transformers it's called Transformers One. One, which I know when I was whispering to you in the theater about it, you were like, "Barf, I want nothing to do with it" or something like that. Because mm -hmm. it's a it's a very oddly new, different take. It's supposed to be an origin of like how Cybertron and basically like. Um, Optimus Prime and Megatron are like best friends and they're like Fuck that. Get out they're of like here. worker robots that that are given basically kind of like Power Rangers, like there's power ring that turns them into heroes. Peter Cullen's not gonna live forever, but if he's not Optimus Prime in a movie, then <laughs> fuck off. That's funny. Yeah. I agree. That is he needs to be the voice, which he's not. I think it's, it's Chris Hemsworth. Or Hemsworth. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's like it's one of the Chris's. But even though I don't like that it's a different take, like that war for Cybertron and that whole like faction and they are like mortal enemies is like, we love that. So we, we don't like that they're doing something different, but it looks cool. My kids are super juiced for it. The trailer makes it seem kind of interesting. If it wasn't those particular characters, you might like that more or be more interested. Maybe. Um, but that looks cool. If you haven't seen the trailer for that, go watch that. Um, has nothing to do with any of the other Transformers movies that have come out. It's no. solo by itself. Um, and then one other honorable mention, which is not a movie, but I am excited for it to come out. You already know about Batman Cape Crusader, but like next week, maybe next week, maybe two weeks from now, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TV show comes oh. out on paramount plus and it right. is it's cartoon animated um but it's all of the actors that are the turtles from the recent mutant mayhem movie even the the supporting cast like post malone still like ray filet and stuff like it's yeah. they're all the same people which i thought yeah, was like, impressive yeah so like if you liked that movie which i did I just recently watched it again, probably liked it more this time than I did the first couple of yeah, it's times. It's a good movie. Um, this show is coming out and it's all of the characters and all the same writers and stuff. So just different animation. And I actually, there's a trailer out for it. I just watched it before we started. Um, it, the trailer gave me vibes of like the eighties, nineties cartoon turtles. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm all about it. But that's something I'm looking forward to. It's not a movie. Top five. Here we go. Number five, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. feel like this had to be on the list. Michael Keaton's in it. Yep. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, did you see the new trailer that just dropped like within the last week for it? Uh, I don't think. Kind of tells uh, more Beetlejuice, story. Beetlejuice? Yeah. Kind of gives mm -hmm. a little bit more story. Way better than the first teasers oh, that we nice. got like okay. it looks a lot better i just was gonna ask if you'd seen that or not no but i'm going to watch it after we get off nice i'm excited for that i feel like three out of my five top five movies are 
Halloween vibes <laughs> like in that awesome. kind of world. But uh, number five was Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Number four, I had Nosferatu. Everything that you said looks amazing. That director is one of my favorite. Like his movies have been fucking awesome. Like The Northman is one of like my low key favorite movies of the last like five years. So mm. um, I'm excited for that. It looks awesome. It looks scary. It looks original for redoing a character in a movie. It looks awesome. Um, and then number three, I had Alien Romulus. Just like you said, it looks like we're getting the original Alien vibes back. Yeah. Like Alien One, fucking, I it just looks scary. It looks like we're getting a single, like stalking alien in a derelict spaceship, which is like the recipe for a good movie. Um, and the more recent trailer, they show them like leaving Earth, and I got yeah. some Blade Runner vibes from it looked very blade runner they're like they get in like a fucking levitating car it's not like a spaceship it's just like a mm -hmm. it's like a spinner as they call it in blade runner so that's i'm excited for that that comes out in do you know when that's dropping august 10th i think i think like three weeks so we're getting alien in august nosferatu is in december yeah, i think that's like right around christmas um, Beetlejuice is in October. September. It's first, oh, it's really? Like the, it's like the first Friday after Labor Day. Oh, I think they're getting you like they're kicking off Halloween yep. season. Spooky right? season. Spooky season. Um, which we're getting close to holiday time, baby. I know I you're excited. Wait. I can't wait. Uh, number one or number two, I've switched these around a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I did have this at number one for most for this entire show. And then right before we got into the list, I changed it. But number two, I have gladiator two. It looks so good. That nice. trailer fucking is awesome. Um, they take, a, there's a, it's a Kanye and Jay Z well, something in the wild. Why am I, what's, why can't I think of no Kings in the wild? What the fuck is wrong with me? Why can't I think Keep of talking? Why can't I think of the name of a song that I've listened to a gajillion times? I used to listen to it pre-football games in college. No Church um, in the Wild. No Church in the Wild, Kyle. They take a badass Kanye and Jay-Z song and, and make it like Gladiator-esque. And it fucking, like, we're getting Denzel being like a freaking rich aristocratic game of thrones the spider type vibe yeah, like character. trying to take over the empire kind of deal yeah. yeah fucking gladiators in rome we got the coliseum filled with boats and sharks which historically that has been taught that's been proven that that is a thing that they've done or did yep. so that is really cool i love the original gladiator movie like there is a as a man there's nothing cooler than fucking gladiator battles. So like this trailer solidified that I'm interested when they announced it. I think we've talked about on this show. Like, what are they going to do? Like, yes. what are they going to do? How are they going to make it interesting? And then they dropped this trailer and I'm like, that's how. Yeah. Like, I, immediately. I was like, I am interested. Yes. And they, there's you, they, they show you the tie to maximus he it's the it's the little like mm -hmm. son that looks like a daughter yep. mm -hmm. from um the original movie which is cool like okay now we know what character we're following because we're yep. like it's gonna be about his son but it's not his son because his son died now we know it's the his like weird love interest that he didn't actually ever get with it's her son that has grown up i think she's in it too right even yeah i thought i saw I her in the so. trailer yeah mom's in it but he has grown up and now he is this leonidas character or not leonidas but the the new maximus um pedro pascal looks fucking badass in it the two like twin bad guys look scary and creepy they look they they give joaquin phoenix bad guy and vibes. one of them's like, joseph quinn from eddie from stranger things that was just in yes, quiet which place. we they love like him. Yeah, but it didn't yeah, look, it like, didn't him. look like him at all. But, but he, when I found out that's what it was. Our human torch. 
I'm I got so pumped when I realized that's who it was because yeah. he doesn't look like he did. But no. anyways, the trailer took me six to midnight. I'm so fucking juiced for that movie. Yeah. I did have it at number one for most of this episode. Bumped it back Until... to number two. Because I didn't have this at number one because I'm like, this is about to come out next week. But really, this is a movie I am super excited about. I was such an X-Men 1 fan. Toad, that saber tooth, Wolverine. I loved those movies when they came out. So this movie, Deadpool 2, 3, Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm so juiced for it. It's going to be awesome. It's 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 going to hit parts of the Marvel movies that I really liked. It's mm-hmm. not. I mean, obviously, there's going to be MCU stuff. It's going to affect the MCU, but it's that Fox X Men stuff is in it, and that's what I'm really excited for. So right. I can't wait to see like the deep cuts and the surprises in. It's really fun going to a superhero movie when you know the people that are making it know and love the character and like the lore that comes with them. So like I feel like we're we're gonna get Wolverine treatment that we weren't able to get in any but of we've the never other ones. before. We already yes. know we're getting that. To yeah, some we're aspect. getting blue and yellow. We're getting right. blue and yellow. Wolverine, which we're fucking twenty five years in, and oh my, could you just imagine twelve movies, and he's never been in blue and yellow? Could you just imagine, like, so w- the, some of the rumors we've heard is that the like most of what's in the trailer takes place in like the first forty minutes of the movie, right? Like, awesome, which Hell is crazy yeah. to think about. But if that's the case, like with, uh, this, and just wouldn't it be awesome? Because we know the sleeves get ripped off that outfit. Oh, Wouldn't yeah. it be awesome yep. if the outfit gets destroyed and then, like, in the back half of the movie, he's wearing, like, dark brown and freaking reddish oh. orange? I, just, it, it, if it Ooh. happened, could you just imagine? Could you? <laughs> Dude, uh, it's going to be fucking awesome. I cannot wait. Um, th- They just dropped shots of the new, like, Marvel Legends figure version of the movie wolverine i'm like that's the best so legends figure i've up. ever yeah, seen it looks amazing the face so, detail is crazy did you see that did you send me the one where it's the side by side from like the original x-men movie yes and which then, i the had that one? character uh, the he looks so freaking weird he looks so bad i had those figures and i loved those old original x-men i'm not X2. buying another wolverine figure not you're gonna, gonna buy no. this one i'm gonna you're, have wolverine figures you're gonna like watch you this have, movie I'm going to have Wolverine figures like you have Batman figures. Okay. We're going to watch this movie and we're immediately going to jump on the pre-order for that. Probably. probably, probably I haven't ordered a movie accurate Deadpool and I need to. So like those are characters that I need that I'll add. So he's pretty close to his comic book outline though. It's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. I think you had just got the new or the I got the the, the, the one, Marvel right? anniversary one. I got the Marvel anniversary yeah, cool. Deadpool and then obviously I got the Marvel anniversary Wolverine that I wasn't going to buy but I did anyway. I hope they um, do a vi- like a chase figure of it. So like in the when they drop sets of figures, they have a chase figure which is basically one of the figures has a variant. I hope yes. there's one sleeveless Wolverine Ugh. and one sleeve Wolverine. I bet they will. They have that would be to. cool. That would be so. pretty cool. Anyways, same top five top I had, five. just in a different order. Well done. Uh, good thing we're gonna do episodes on all five of those movies. So that's that's exciting. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Let's go. Uh, lined up. Let's uh, let's let's move along. We're running a little over today, but we did have a lot to talk about because it has been two weeks. But. Um, we're back with another segment of how rotten is your tomato? Kyle's turn. Once again, just a rehash on how this is going to go. I'm going to give Kyle two movies. He has to guess which one's higher on the rotten tomato scorecard. And then if he can guess the score, we'll see how he does. So I got some, I got some good ones. So we're going to do five sets like we have the last few weeks. All right. Are you ready? I am so ready. I had this list ready two weeks ago, so we're going to start with <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop from 1984, the original. 
Beverly Hills Cop. The yep. Eddie Murphy classic from 1984. Yep. And from 2008, Tropic Th That is a good, because I feel like I'm, I'm tricking myself in my head, but I'm like, I feel like Tropic Thunder is really well liked, but but had terrible reviews or actually had really good reviews at the time. And I, I know Beverly Hills Cop was popular because it came, there was multiple movies. So I'm going to give, I'm going to say Beverly Hills Cop is higher. I'm going to give it an 83. And I'm going to say Tropic Thunder was an 81. Tropic Thunder was higher, Damn it. but your scores are almost dead on. <laughs> nice. Beverly Hills Cop was an 81. Oh, shit. I was Tropic opposite. Thunder was an 82. Oh, gosh. Okay. So you so were, they were right close. there. And you were right they there. Were close. You were right there. Damn. Okay. Nice. All right. So I gave you that one. I'm going to give you a set of a couple of superhero ones. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. This is my world. Okay. So these are a little bit disliked in a, some communities. Sequels. All right. From 2006, Superman. Oh. And from 2012, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, God. I, we know I love. I know you do. Me some Andrew Garfield. And I thought that movie was fucking kick-ass. I was super disappointed with Superman Returns when it came out because I wanted it to be Dark Knight-esque. At the time, but I was a naive, dumb kid. I just watched that movie again a couple weeks ago, and it's it's actually good. I like it because it's very faithful and is a sequel to the, essentially to the Donner movies, right? right. So right, you're correct. Um, and they really give you that vibe, which now i look back at fondly and appreciate it but at the time i don't think it, i don't think it had good reviews i'm gonna say spider-man 2 was higher even though they canceled the entire franchise, the franchise. After it. <laughs> even i still thought it even was a though. great movie i'm gonna give spider-man 2 an 84 the amazing spider-man 2 an 84 and superman returns was like a 75. superman returns was higher Oh, shocked. We're close on the score. Superman Returns was a 74. Oh, shit. I still was above. I gave it too much. Amazing. Oh, my God. Don't you dare. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a 71. Get out. Get out. Critics, you suck. Big Go back and watch that movie. I it have. was great. It's not. It's 71. <laughs> you it's think that movie was a 71? Easily. That Just because you don't like Electro. Or Stop Green, letting or him Green ruin Goblin. the movie. Or Green oh, Goblin. Yeah. They oh, both yeah, Green Goblin did suck. Yeah, but Andrew Garfield was so good that it lifted. Yeah, he, yeah, lifted, he lifted it up. to a 71. He lifted no, it to a 71. He lifted it up to an 82. Mm -mm. All right. All right. Now we're going to do some not as well-liked superhero movies. Are you ready? Didn't you? I thought that's what the last one was. No, they, they, <laughs> we're going downhill. Okay. Perfect. Spider-Man right. 3 oh. with Tobey Maguire and Topher Grace. And 2006, Smin, The Last Stand. I know people hate X3. F you. I liked it. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I liked X3. Mm -hmm. um, X-Men, The Last Stand. And both Spider-Man 3. Basically oh. ended their franchises. Yeah, but the X3 was the end of... It was the end. Yeah, but like, you couldn't make yeah. more. It could have made more I, of both. I, X3 had Juggernaut in it. I'm the Juggernaut, Juggernaut bitch. bitch. Um, I thought Angel was such a weird way. <laughs> such a God, random and, character. And Ben Foster is such a great actor, too. Yes, he is, a, he is a great villain Ugh. in movies. So... That was a wasted character. Yeah. Um, but I still liked that movie. I didn't like it as much as X2. And I don't look no. back at it fondly like I did. But I liked that movie. It was sad when he kills. Spoiler. When he kills freaking Gene. 
17 years later. When he's crying, alert. fucking Hugh Jackman crushed the emotions in that movie. I'm going to say X3 is the higher rated movie. Spider-Man 3, I that's probably the first movie I've ever been in when I was still young and it pissed me off of like what are you what is Spider-Man doing? Why is he an emo? Why is his hair like that? Why is he dancing? Yeah, what is going on? Like I just didn't know what the fuck was going on. And then not even talking about Topher Grace. <sighs> The worst casted character and version of any comic book character ever. Even worse than freaking um, Jesse Eisenberg. He's right up there with Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. We did that list one time. And and Colin Farrell's Bullseye. Like, pretty Uh, close. That that movie was bad, though, too. Daredevil's trash. That was the prequel to Batman we got. X-Men 3 is higher. Spider-Man mm-hmm. 3 is lower. X-Men 3 is a 77. Spider-Man 3 is a 65. We are laughing. Spider-Man 3, you're close. <laughs> laughing. Spider-Man 3 is close. It's a 63, oh! which, is the, which, which is the higher of the two scores. Get out of here. X-Men The Last Stand is a 57. Holy hell. It's not. Wow. Either. I know. I did not realize that. That bombed. Yeah. That's shocking. I know. Three down, two to go. You ready? All right. Okay, last yeah, last <laughs> Superman one, or last superhero one, not Superman. Superhero one. Now, okay. these are, we were tiers, right? We're now here. Okay. Okay. Are you okay, ready? So we've dropped. This, this is, is going to be fucking like low. steel. And- <laughs> no, no, no. 1997's Batman and Robin. 2009's X Men Origins Wolverine. Oh. Batman and Robin is the higher rated movie. X Men Origins Wolverine is a 40. There's no way anyone gave anything above that. And Batman and Robin was at least a 55. It made money. People went to it. So X-Men Origins Wolverine is the higher of the two. Oh, what? And it's a 38. <laughs> oh, my God. Batman did that. Man. How did I not know that? Batman and Robin <laughs> is 12. That's 12%. historic. That's legendarily That's bad. bad. How did 12, I not know that? It was that 12%. bad. 12. Wow. No wonder they killed the franchise. Do you think they were just thinking like, fuck, we, we really, we, we like, need to sell toys. <laughs> they just were like, we slapped freaking Tim Burton on the wrist for what he did. And now we're here. Now we're at a 12. We've killed the franchise. Schumacher. We're idiots. What did we're we stupid. Do? Should have paid yes. Tim Burton. We should have paid Michael Keaton. Whatever yeah, they want. Fuck wanted. McDonald's. Let yep. them roll. Fuck McDonald's. I don't really mean that, McDonald's. I know you're always <laughs> listening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ooh, boy, 12%. You, That's you gotta, shocking. You're, you're not doing real well here, Kyle. I mean, you're getting close <laughs> yeah. on some of these, but Damn it. you're not getting the higher and lower here. All right. Last one. Kids movies. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. As, as, a, as a father of three sons, I'm sure you've seen both. Because they're video game movies. 2020's Sonic the Hedgehog and 2023's Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, yeah. See, for me, I think Super Mario was a way better movie. Way better. Primarily, though, because I'm, I was a Nintendo kid. I'm biased to Mario, so I'm interested in it. The, I like more of the animated movie as opposed to like the Roger Rabbit type vibes uh, that Sonic did. Mm -hmm. But I know Sonic was really popular. I know it was. I know I should say Sonic was higher, but in my heart of hearts, Super Mario, the original OG Italian stallion plumber was higher. And Super Mario was, it was good. Right? That's got to be in the 90s. 91? 92? No, no, no. You think? Fuck. Okay. I know, 80, I know, I see it. 85. I I'm going to go with an 85. 
and I'm going to go with Sonic was like an 83. Oh, I know it was good enough that they gave it more. You are so about to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> no way. They were that bad. Sonic they made was a fuck ton of higher. money. No, good. You got to keep in mind what the scale means, right? Like it's yeah, in yeah, the, yeah, if yeah. it's in the seventies, it's a seven, right? Like, I mean, you got to think of it that way, right? If you're thinking on a 10 point scale. Okay. Sonic the Hedgehog is the higher of the two. Shocking. At 64%. Oh wow! I thought that movie was a lot more liked. No, well, that's, but that's again, that's a six and a half out of ten. That's not a bad movie. That's I hear six, and I think D. <laughs> like that means six and a half people out of ten enjoyed the movie. Oh, okay, that's a good way. Think about it that way, it. right? Like certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes is like over sixty eight percent. Like that means it's fresh. Fascinating. Yeah. All right, Super Mario Brothers. Just was a, over half people liked this movie, so it's Super a good Mario one. Brothers was a fifty nine percent. Wow, it did that bad. I thought again, though. Like, I thought that that's movie was six, liked. That's six out of ten critically. I know that's six out of ten critics liked Super Mario Brothers. I thought. I just thought. I remember that being like a home run. Shock. It made a ton of money. Maybe I'm just fondly remembering it because it was like our second episode of this. It's or first, first, first episode. It's the first episode. Oh yeah, Super Mario Brothers. OG, OG, Super Mario. Nine percent. Anyway, not your best. Not your best performance. Damn it! Good stuff though. That was fun. That was a good one. That was a good, was a good set. You really right. actually you put together movies that we didn't already do, mm. <laughs> like I did last time. <laughs> we start keeping track, yeah. but yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. I mean, like if it's, there's a good distance between them, it's all right. All right, that, that takes good. us. That brings us to the end of episode fifty-five of the Movie Dads podcast, twenty twenty-four action thriller disaster film, Twisters. Go see it. If you're watching this on YouTube, please click the like and subscribe. Click the bell so you get notifications when new episodes come out, which is nine a.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesdays. If you want to watch Guys, this on YouTube, leave comments. Leave comments. I haven't had anyone make fun of my action figures in a long time. It's true. Like first couple of weeks, we were in this. I was going town battling people in the comments. Mm-hmm. Say something mean. Make fun of me. Make, Make fun, fun of the Jaguars. Of our choices. It's fine. Don't talk about the Jaguars. You're wearing the jersey. Um, if you're not <laughs> watching us on YouTube, you can find us on many podcast networks such as Apple, mm-hmm. Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, among many others. See some of our short clips and videos on social media at Movie Dads Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'll be back next week, episode 56, Deadpool and Wolverine. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Just That's the tagline. Movie. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.